Hello, fellow poetry readers. Here we are again for our last week of poetry analysis this unit. Today we're going to read and analyze a poem by E.E. E. Cummings called I Carry Your Heart With Me, I Carry It In. Um, I have intentionally saved all of the love poems for the end of the unit, and I hope you appreciate that. However, no poetry unit can be complete without a couple of love poems. So this is one of my favorites, the one that we're going to start with. Um, a little background on E.E. E. Cummings, um, not so much about him, though he's a very famous, very well-known, very popular poet, um, but I wanted to share with you that he falls somewhat into a category of modernist um, literature and modernist poetry. And so you'll see as we read this the first time, and if you read any of his works, that um, he really takes apart a lot of traditional forms of writing. So he plays pretty significantly with grammar and punctuation and spelling. Um, he uses a really idiosyncratic syntax, meaning the way that he uses words and how he inserts them into his poems is very unique to him. Um, and so you'll see that as we read through this poem. Um, and that and those are very intentional stylistic things that he has played with that is very characteristic of his writing. You could see a lot of poems and probably guess they were his just by the way that they're formatted. So um, we will begin with a reading of I Carry Your Heart With Me, I Carry It In, which I have for us here. You have your copy as well, hopefully. Um, and of course, the annotation and analysis guide. So here we go. I carry your heart with me. I carry it in my heart. I am never without it. Anywhere I go, you go, my dear. And whatever is done by only me is your doing, my darling. I fear no fate, for you are my fate, my sweet. I want no world, for beautiful you are my world, my true. And it's you are whatever a moon has always meant, and whatever a sun will always sing is you. Here is the deepest secret nobody knows. Here is the root of the root and the bud of the bud and the sky of the sky of a tree called life, which grows higher than soul can hope or mind can hide. And this is the wonder that's keeping the stars apart. I carry your heart. I carry it in my heart. All right, so it's a pretty short poem. Uh, three, kind of four verses or stanzas there. Um, that's your first reading of it. Um, you should go through and mark what you enjoy about this poem, what you're confused by or you don't like. So for me, um, parts of this poem that I really love come in the second stanza, the last two lines. I love the comparison that you are whatever the moon has always meant. The moon is often a symbol of love. Um, and so whatever it means, you're that. That's what he's saying of his beloved. Um, and that whatever a sun will always sing is you. So it doesn't matter what song the sun sings every morning when it rises. Um, his beloved can always be found in that song. Um, and then I also love the part in parentheses in the third major verse about the root of the root and the bud of the bud and the sky of the sky of a tree called life. I really love the way those um, words flow. And then when we talk a little bit more in depth about the meaning, um, I'll share a little bit about what I like about the, the meaning of those lines. So those are some things I like. Um, I can say, I think pretty solidly, that while I love his play with punctuation and grammar and syntax, a lowercase i just hurts my teacher's soul. So I was able to put a minus sign on this poem because of that. Um, so you should know that you know, at the time that he was writing this poem, it wasn't normal for people to not capitalize I the way you see it in a lot of student writing and in text messages and things like that. So he's kind of a pioneer of the lowercase I. Um, and I don't like that. So there's something there that somewhat bothers me. Um, okay, so moving on, I can get over myself here. Um, 
my general understanding of this poem is that he is writing a love poem about somebody that he's deeply in love with and someone who he feels is the world to him. That all of these things, um, he even, I think, says it here. He says, I want no world, for beautiful you are my world, my true. So he's describing and explaining about how his love means the world to him. So that's kind of my kind of surface level understanding of what this poem is about. Um, on second read, I go through and mark the verbs, adjectives, and imagery. So I've done that as well. There are some good verbs here, though I would say generally speaking, the language is pretty simple. It's very powerful, but the word choice is rather simple. Um, so some verbs that stand out to me are carry, doing, fear, want, are, sing, hope, and hide. Um, so pretty common verbs. It's not a lot of tough vocabulary in this poem um, that doesn't detract from the significance of its meaning or how profound it is, but it is simple in its language. Um, so those are some of my verbs. Really the only um, adjective that I highlighted in this poem is the word beautiful right there in the middle. Not a lot of adjectives here. And then I went through and I have circled two examples of imagery that I really love. One of them is that whole section in the third to last, or actually first to last, the third verse in parentheses. So it starts with, here's the root of the root and the bud of the bud. In the sky of the sky of a tree called life, which grows higher than soul can hope or mind can hide. I think that's really strong imagery. I'm imagining the start of a root, the beginning of a bud, um, the far reaches of the sky, the tree of life, um, and how it grows and, and this expansiveness. So that to me was a little bit of imagery. And then the line afterwards that says, keeping the stars apart. So I can think of the stars and I'm thinking about the space between the stars. Um, and that's just a way of speaking about stars that I had never really thought of before about what keeps the stars apart. That was really beautiful to me. So those are the things that I circled. There are a few other options in this poem um, that you might choose from, so please do so. When I read this poem, my feelings or the mood that I get is I feel very light and I'm feeling the purity of love, that love and light are equated to me. Um, I'm feeling deep connection that this man, E. Cummings, that he has a deep connection with, with his beloved. And so I think about the love in my own life or the loves that I hope to experience. And I think about that deep connection and the purity of that love um, and how much devotion he has. And so I can hold those feelings in my heart too as I'm reading this and I feel them deeply. So moving on um, to the third read, I will um, tell you about the symbol that I would choose or the image that I would choose. And then I wanna read the poem to you again and we'll talk a little bit about theme. So I chose um, an infinity sign, you know, it's that figure eight on its side. Um, and I choose it because to me, when I read this poem, I feel that the bond between the poet and the person he's writing about is that it's eternal and it's infinite, like the infinity sign. So I think that that symbol really holds all of the love that's possible in the universe um, and that it's everlasting. So that's my image. Um, all right, I'm going to go back through and read it one more time, and we'll talk about theme. Okay. I carry your heart with me, I carry it in, by E.E. E. Cummings. I carry your heart with me, I carry it in my heart. I am never without it. Anywhere I go, you go, my dear. And whatever is done by only me is your doing, my darling. I fear no fate, for you are my fate, my sweet. I want no world, for beautiful you are my world, my true. And it's you are whatever a moon has always meant, and whatever a sun will always sing is you. Here is the deepest secret nobody knows. Here is the root of the root and the bud of the bud and the sky of the sky of a tree called life, which grows higher than soul can hope or mind can hide. 
and this is the wonder that's keeping the stars apart. I carry your heart. I carry it in my heart. So on second read, um, you know, one of the things that I really love are his terms of endearment. So things like honey and sweetheart that are pretty common that we hear. But he also says, um, you know, he calls her my dear and my darling, my sweet and my true. I love the term my true. That's so unique. I've never heard that before other than in this poem. But that's a lovely one. Um, and I love... I actually really do love his use of punctuation here, that he inserts these, these parentheses when he's talking to his, his beloved. Um, Anywhere I go, you go. Whatever is done by me is your doing. It really shows how inseparable they are, that they're bonded and that they're united and that the things that he does um, and that he is are reflections of, of his love um, and who that person is. And so I really, when I think about that, I think it helps me to solidify my understanding of the theme and the message of this poem. Um, I find that he's saying that nothing can separate true love, that it's inseparable. Um, I get that when he says that it grows higher than the soul can hope. So it's beyond the individual, it's beyond one's soul, that this love is transcendent. It's beyond him, and it might be beyond his beloved. It's something that they share and have created that's even more. Um, I find that he's saying that his love is his whole life and it's his whole universe. Everything important to him and of value to him is within this love. Um, that they're integrated by a spiritual love, that it's not just physical and it's not just um, between their interactions, that it exists everywhere, always, eternally, and yeah, I guess internally, but eternally is what I meant to say. Um, and, you know, when he says that, you know, it's, um, it's a wonder that's, and this is the wonder that's keeping the stars apart, to me, I take that to mean that it's a little bit of a mystery. It's the deepest secret that nobody knows, that a love this pure and this profound and this transcendent um, is one of the greatest mysteries of life, and that it's on the same level as the way plants grow and it's on the same level as the moon and the sun and the stars that that's how big this love is and how important it is and how much of a mystery it is um and i think he's saying that the pureness of that love is immeasurable the same way maybe we would consider the stars to be immeasurable or the the sun and the moon um and so i think that is a piece of that message that true love is that great mystery, that it can be worth your whole life, that it is your whole life, that it's bigger than the universe, and that that connection with another person is so profound and so deep and so pure, um, and, how, and how lucky he is to always hold that love within himself at all times. So, yeah, quite an amazing love poem, I think. Um, at this point, go back and finish the assignment. Read it a couple more times if you want. I hope this is a poem that you keep coming back to time after time um, the way it is for me. I think it's really beautiful and uplifting and speaks perfectly to the power of love. All right. Hope that made your day, and I will see you guys soon.